New York Times bashes a left-wing icon, you know something is wrong in liberal land. In 1962, science writer Rachel Carson penned a controversial book about the effect pesticides might have on wildlife and the environment. The book claimed the chemical DDT, which was widely used to fight the mosquito-borne disease malaria, would eventually cause a world where no birds sing and where natural waterways would become rivers of death. She also made the hysterical claims that DDT, which is credited with eradicating the deadly disease in the United States and Europe, would cause cancer in humans. The book, Silent Spring, was a 1962 bestseller, and Rachel Carson instantly became the face of the environmental movement in the United States. At the time, Carson's critics warned that her research was flawed and inconclusive, but her supporters insisted critics had financial interests in keeping DDT on the market. Because of the controversy, extensive hearings were held on the safety of DDT. In 1972, the EPA hearing examiner concluded, quote, DDT is not a carcinogenic hazard to man. The use of DDT under the regulations involved here do not have a deleterious effect on freshwater fish, estuarine organisms, wild birds, or other wildlife. But regardless of those findings, DDT was banned for use in the United States and was eventually banned worldwide. The problem is Carson's book was wrong. Despite her doomsday predictions, there is no definitive evidence that what she called elixirs of death have killed birds, fish, or people. Last week, the New York Times published a scathing article about the inaccuracies of Silent Spring, and it said, quote, Miss Carson used dubious statistics and anecdotes, like the improbable story of a woman who instantly developed cancer after spraying her basement with DDT, to warn of a cancer epidemic that never came to pass. She rightly noted threats to some birds like eagles and other raptors, but she wildly imagined a mass biocide. And what about the countries that are still battling malaria? According to the World Health Organization, there are globally more than a million deaths a year from malaria. And 90% of those deaths occur in Africa, where a baby dies from malaria every 30 seconds. The WHO actually recommends indoor residual spraying of DDT for malaria vector control. In a recent Wall Street Journal op-ed entitled Give Us DDT, the Director General of Health Services for the Republic of Uganda made an impassioned plea to environmentalists in the U.S. to stop blocking DDT from getting to Uganda. He said, quote, after decades of exhaustive scientific review, DDT has been shown to not only be safe for humans in the environment, but also the single most effective anti-malarial agent ever invented. Environmental leaders must join the 21st century, acknowledge the mistake Carson made, and balance the hypothetical risks of DDT with the real devastating consequences of malaria. So in reality, Rachel Carson, the darling of the environmentalists, is actually to blame for halting the use of what many health experts consider the greatest life-saving chemical ever discovered. Meanwhile, Carson's book of fiction continues to be required reading at Ivy League schools. Why aren't today's tree huggers condemning Carson's shoddy research and her dubious claims? In fact, a new book by Senator John Kerry and his wife says of Carson, quote, her research was exact, her approach precise. Former Vice President Al Gore, who wrote the introduction to the 1994 edition of Silent Spring, said Rachel Carson inspired him to write his book, Earth in the Balance. And he said, quote, she had checked and rechecked every paragraph in Silent Spring, and the passing years have revealed that her warnings were, if anything, understated. The fact is, history has shown that Rachel Carson, the mother of the environmental movement, made devastating and deadly mistakes. Best case scenario, she saved a few birds. But it's the worst case scenario that came true. Millions of people died of a preventable disease. I guess for some liberals, Silent Spring is just another inconvenient truth. And up next, pop culture politics.